Hello and welcome back to the Stronghold. I'm the Magi and well welcome also to our very first video discussing Modern Horizons 3. And this is going to be one of those good news, bad news sorts of videos. Uh, the bad news is there is no mastery pass for this set. That also has the implication that there is no release week bonus resets, extra gold, extra quest, etc, etc. Uh, on the upside, that also means you don't necessarily have to play extra hard on June 9th and 10th, and there's no reason to get out of bed at the crack of dawn on the 11th. Uh, again, on the upside, while they didn't give us a mastery pass, they did give us a viable alternative to consider. We're going to take a good hard look at that and decide who this new product is for. Uh, is it for you? Stay tuned. 2024 marks the 70th anniversary of the Godzilla franchise and just like Godzilla, Modern Horizons 3 is going to be an absolute monster of a set. So if you want to throw your weight around just like Godzilla, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you find this video helpful, be sure to share it out on your favorite social media platform. Now, um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, right. All right, so no Mastery Pass this time around. What they have given us, however, is a brand new product design uh, that they have dubbed Psychic Frog's Horizon Hideaway. Uh, the way they have termed this, it's actually kind of good. Uh, they have expressed this as a new way to earn more rewards through play for sets that aren't legal in Standard or Alchemy, uh, beginning with the release of Modern Horizons 3 on July 11th. I think the overall implications here, as I mentioned earlier, are good. Uh, the idea here that they are trying to reward without necessarily having to create a separate Mastery Pass season um, is, is only a benefit uh, to a budget perspective sort of thing. Um, it, this is also kind of pointing towards future releases like this, of course, presuming that this financially does well for Wizards of the Coast. Uh, and it also points to a future where they are not cramming sets like last summer's Lord of the Rings release into the alchemy format, leaving it utterly imbalanced for over a year. Uh, all of those things, I think, are really, really good options and good directions for Wizards of the Coast. But is this set actually worth buying for you and more broadly for budget players in general. Let's take a look at the specifics here. This new reward system is going to revolve around tickets, um, primarily that you earn by completing quests and also your daily wins. Uh, for instance, your daily wins one through five, i.e. the more important ones, are gonna earn you two tickets per win. Your six through 10 win each day will earn you only one ticket, and any wins 11 or more, well, doesn't do anything for you. Um, with a 50-day season for Modern Horizons 3, and what I consider a minimum level of play, making sure that you're completing uh, one quest on average per day and hitting those uh, two to three wins per day, you can easily earn 2,450 tickets in this season without even really trying too much. Um, so the question then remains, what are these tickets for and, you know, is it worthwhile? Those tickets in turn can be redeemed for a variety of reward options. Uh, but if you're not very cosmetically oriented like myself, it really comes down to three things. A premier draft token for 300 tickets, the option to buy a Modern Horizons 3 pack for 95 tickets with a maximum redemption of eight, and the option to buy a mythic ICR or individual card reward from Modern Horizon for 70 tickets with a maximum redemption of 10. Uh, when you delve all this out at kind of a 
minimum amount of gem value, you get 2,750 gems, just under the 2,800 gem purchase price of the Horizon Hideaway. So there's certainly a case to be made that maybe the value isn't here. On the upside, those three items would only cost you uh, 1,760 tickets, uh, well under the expected earnings from even an average level of play, leaving plenty of room for other cosmetics that uh, total 750 additional tickets. Um, really, I think this comes down to how an individual values that draft token. So we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Now, as many of you will already know, I actually farm a total of three accounts most of the time. Uh, of course, my primary account and then a new free-to-play account that I start each new budget year and farm for two years. And as for me, I am on my primary account probably going to go ahead and pick this up. Um, mostly because I already have the gem saved up. I've already accounted for it in the budget. And it gives me the opportunity to experience it and maybe be surprised by the intrinsic value. Uh, picking up a few extra packs, picking up that draft token, etc., etc. But when it comes to those free-to-play accounts that I'm farming on the short term, I think, honestly, this is a bit of a hard pass. I just don't see the value on uh, one extra draft token for the year, as well as only eight packs and 10 mythics. What I really wish they had done here is not put a cap on the number of packs um, or maybe allow a second draft token purchase. For those people like myself that don't really care about the cosmetics. Now, again, you might totally feel differently. You might value these things differently, and that's okay. My point here is to talk about it and get folks out there thinking about it and making their own decision based on the way that they play the game. And in order to further that discussion, we're gonna transition now into some in-depth details of how I usually value the various pieces of the Mastery Pass and some things you might want to be thinking about. Now, as we move into valuation of the different components of the Mastery Pass that we just talked about, I do want to take just a moment and acknowledge the fact that people play this game differently. I don't expect you to be a mirror image of me or my play style or the economics that are factored by those play styles. Uh, if you have your own perspective on how to value these things and it makes sense to you, by all means, use that. My goal here is not to get you to think exactly the way I do or convince you that I'm right, but to get you to think about the economics of the game from your own unique perspective. Now, when it comes to cosmetics, I am not shy at all about saying that, well, I don't see a lot of value in cosmetics. Uh, as far as I know, I have never won a game because of cosmetics. I don't spend resources on cosmetics. I don't recommend that you spend resources on cosmetics. But if you feel differently, you might find a wide range of valuations on various cosmetics. I, however, do not spend any resources on cosmetics, and as such, I do not put any value to them when evaluating the Mastery Pass. After cosmetics, by far the most numerous thing you're going to find in the Mastery Pass are packs from various sets. And really how you value these is going to have a big determination because of the frequency on uh, what you see as the total Mastery Pass value. And uh, really, you could make an argument for some people that are strictly free to play that packs really don't have any value because they don't actually buy them. Um, personally, I dismiss that. I, I think that's a little uh, too far one side there as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I do think there is some validity for people that bulk out their collection through Quick Draft. And there you get a 
per pack value of about 150 gems. Uh, of course, the store sells packs uh, for 200 gems pretty much every set every day of the week and occasionally we see discounted packs anywhere from 170 to 180 gems uh, so depending upon where you are in this spectrum uh, is going to have a big influence on your total mastery pass value now for myself and what i recommend through the plan the number of packs purchased etc uh, i am currently using about 180 gems as my pack value and once you've established a value for packs, whatever the case may be, uh, you probably want to use that same valuation for the levels that offer you 1,000 gold because 1,000 gold to a pack is a pretty good analog and is probably going to continue to reflect the way you play the game and engage with the economy. Now, the lowest frequency piece within the Mastery Pass Awards is probably the one that is most heatedly disputed among uh, various play styles. Uh, and that, of course, is the draft token. For a limited number of people that just don't like to draft, I could see their argument that this really doesn't have any value whatsoever. Uh, for those that primarily engage with limited through quick draft, I could see this having a replacement value of 750 gems because basically you would just be doing a premium draft in place of a quick draft, therefore, 750 gems fits pretty well uh, as an opportunity cost analog. Of course, there are also people that decide to engage with premium draft because of the uh, more nuanced version of draft that that offers, uh, but they do so by purchasing discounted draft tokens from time to time. Uh, therefore, the average price on that 1,350 gems is a very solid metric there. And of course, on the opposite end of the spectrum, for people that uh, readily purchase uh, gems in order to engage in either premium or traditional drafts, a value of 1,500 gems might be totally justified. For your average free-to-play player, I think typically when they uh, receive or purchase these draft tokens, it's doing a little more than replacing a quick draft for them. So I think more often than not, the 750 gem is the more conservative and often correct answer. By far, however, the swingiest evaluation that you will see regarding the Mastery Pass is with the play sets of designated rares and the individual mythic card rewards. Uh, one of the more top-end versions of this that I have seen people use is uh, converting the uh, wild card purchase options from cash into gems, uh, but so doing means you get more than the mastery pass value back with just the mythic uh, ICRs. And I think this is kind of invalid because an ICR and a wild card and a specific rare are not necessarily equal in value because of course an ICR just gives you a random mythic. A mythic wild card can be redeemed for exactly the mythic that you want. So again, this is one of those areas you can do what you want. It Whatever makes sense to you is what you should be valuing at. But for me, I don't think these models really work. For me, in order to be very conservative, I go to the other end of the spectrum. Um, I value a Mythic ICR at 40 gems because that is the amount that Wizards is willing to give me in an instance where I get a fifth copy of a Mythic. Uh, similarly, I value rares at 20 gems each. So four rares a play set is 80 gems in my book. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that or see other factors, and I welcome them to do so. And before we go, I want to take just a moment to thank my totally awesome patrons for supporting me and allowing me to apply my passion into a community.
And of course, before we go, I've got some suggestions for your next step. I've got some suggestions for your next step.